What would happen if we were to all follow the old adage, if you can't say anything nice about a person, do not say anything at all? Do you believe the world would be a better place? What would happen if we would all work as a team to solve the world's problems and focused on each of our strengths? Instead of working on the world's problems individually, do you think we would have a greater chance of being more successful as a team in resolving our problems? What am I talking about? Not necessarily about individuals, but in fact I'm talking about the world's energy industries. All of them. Coal, oil, natural gas, wind, solar, nuclear, and the rest can all work together to better our world and solve many problems. And for those of us who cherish affordable energy and resources, we know that amazing things will be possible when we can all afford to pursue our dreams. Let's look at the potential of the coal and nuclear power industries embracing the concept of working together. The many advocates of nuclear energy traditionally bash the coal industry over the head and scream, air pollution, mining accidents and sick miners, and tremendous piles of unsightly coal ash filled with contaminants. The coal advocates traditionally bash nuclear over the head by saying, danger Will Robinson, danger, and point to Fukushima, Chernobyl, and Three Mile Island. The truth is, infighting between energy advocates puts political pressure on legislators to regulate these industries out of existence. And divided, these highly regulated industries are much less influential and less powerful than they would be if they spoke with one voice. Both of these energy sources have very large strengths that, if developed, could transform the public perception of their industries. Coal is much more energy dense than electric batteries and it can be easily transformed into an ultra-clean synthetic gasoline here in North America, which would not require a military force to be dispatched to the Middle East to protect our energy interests from oil suppliers that finance terrorism against us. A nuclear fuel like thorium that is a million times more energy dense than coal requires no enrichment, is weaponization resistant, can be used in a reactor that produces almost no waste, produces no carbon dioxide, and cannot melt down. Nuclear technologies can work with coal to provide us the economic freedom to pursue our dreams and live much more comfortably. Because thorium is found almost everywhere on Earth, and because it does not need enriching, it is a much more economical nuclear fuel than uranium. And because thorium can be utilized in a very simple and very cheap to build molten salt reactor that is designed to produce heat and electricity much cheaper than coal and do it without producing any carbon dioxide, it makes sense to produce electricity with thorium and a molten salt reactor. But what thorium and a molten salt reactor cannot do is power our cars. But with thorium's help, coal can. Nuclear technologies will probably never be small enough or made safe enough to install on board our cars to power them. Moreover, batteries and electric powered cars will probably not compete in our lifetime on equal footing in performance and range with coal-based synthetic fuels. Why has the coal industry not pursued coal to liquid fuels development more vigorously? After all, the technology has been around since World War II when the Nazis developed and commercialized the process of turning coal into liquid fuel to power their military might. The reason why this technology has not been pursued up to now is purely economic. Until now, the process has cost too much because the required amount of energy was too expensive. But when we think outside of the box and combine nuclear and coal technologies, we open up new technological and economic possibilities. Coal to liquid fuel plants have been built since World War II, and some are operating in fuel-starved lands like China and Africa. We know that it is very possible to convert massive amounts of coal on a large commercial scale into synthetic gasoline and into synthetic diesel fuel. But this process has only ever been driven by the combustion of coal to produce heat and electricity that drives the process. And compared to thorium, coal is much too expensive to burn to power this process. The element thorium and a molten salt reactor could make this process much more economically attractive. So much so that preliminary research suggests that this combination of these technologies 
can make ultra clean diesel and gasoline that can compete very nicely in the American markets. If the coal industry were ever to work with the nuclear industry to develop the thorium fuel cycle, it is easy to envision a win-win-win scenario. Stockholders in coal companies win with larger profits. Consumers win with a lower cost and a more stable fuel supply. The environment wins with a better and more efficient use of coal and less pollution in both the nuclear and coal industries. Let's stop fighting with each other and start working together to solve our problems and to benefit our customers, our stockholders, and the environment. It is too hard for us to see our dreams when we are fighting over how best to keep the lights on and how to keep our motors running, which is what North America is doing now. Thanks for watching and for learning about your bright future.